Good morning. Good morning. That's better. We are so glad you're here today, and we'd like to welcome you if you're here with us in person, or if you're joining us online. It is such a great day to be here and worship with you today. And I would just like to go over some of our community announcements. No, just one down. Um, we had a helping hands day yesterday, and so we'd like to thank all those that were able to come out and volunteer with us. It was a great day, a beautiful weather, and I know we helped out a lot of people, so thank you if you're able to do that with us. Uh, we're still selling our yard signs that say comfort and joy, because that's the message we would like to spread uh, throughout this Advent and Christmas season. So if you would like a yard sign that says comfort and joy on it, um, it says Wesley and I Methodist Church. Um, we're asking that you uh, give us a free will donation, order, however much yeah. you are willing to give us mm -hmm. for that. The order and we would be that. glad to put that in your yard so that you can help that on your the list. church <laughs> spread that message. Uh, we're going to start a new Advent study, and that will start on November 29th, and that is uh, Incarnation, which is an Adam Hamilton study. But you can go on our Facebook page or um, on our website to look at the newsletter, and there's more information about that. But please consider to join us for an Advent study this Advent season. I believe we're going to be having in-person and online uh, groups, so uh, whatever you're comfortable with, please uh, consider joining us for that. Um, as you are walking in, um, right here by our sanctuary door, um, we have the angel tree uh, set up, and so that is um, given to us through hope. And so if you are inclined, there are ornaments of where people need some help, so you can go out and do a little Christmas shopping. We ask that you wrap those gifts and then put them back underneath that tree, and then they will get to hope um, where they will be distributed where they are needed. Um, also, if you'd like to, they're accepting crock pots and small coffee makers. Those don't have to be wrapped. You can just bring those and put them underneath um, that angel tree, and that way they will get where they need to get to. And finally, um, Pastor Tom has asked for some help from you, the congregation. Um, in preparation for Consecration Sunday, we are in need of people who are willing to record a brief video of themselves answering the question, what does it mean to you to invest in the ministry of Wesley United Methodist Church? If you are willing to do so, please prepare your video, upload it to your Google Drive, and then share it with Lauren Malott at lmalott2022 at gmail.com, no later than Wednesday, November 11. Um, if you have any questions or if you need assistance, please contact Pastor Tom by calling the church office or emailing him at his church email. And thank you so much for doing that in advance. And today, as it is a second Sunday of the month, we'd like to invite up Joanne Gregg. She has the Mission of the Month moment. Now, I know you've heard lots of huge numbers this week, but I've got another huge one for you. 110 billion pounds of food, 110 billion pounds of food are wasted in the United States in a year. That's all the way from the fields, to transportation, to grocery stores, to restaurants, and to homes. So, the missions ministry team has selected an old favorite, the Society of St. Andrew. It's a nonprofit organization that coordinates growers and volunteers and food agencies, such as a food bank, and they salvage them for the needy. Now, one of their programs is the Potato Project. And we know it works because just last month in Springfield, a big semi pulled up with 40,000 of pounds of potatoes in 10 pound sacks. Now churches had been invited to say how many of those sacks they could use. So they got a big part of the load. And then the rest of the load went to the Central Illinois Food Bank in Springfield which of course will pass it on into soup kitchens and food pantries. Another project, the one that's special for us also, 
is the gleaning project. That's when volunteers go into a field, perhaps after it's already been picked, and there were odd size shaped fruits or vegetables left, perfectly good food, and so the gleaners pick it up. The headquarters for Society of St. Andrews is in Virginia, but this agency works all over the United States to rescue food which can be eaten. So, let me read from their newsletter. Please make a donation to the Society for St. Andrews. We do not charge fees for our services, but rely 100% on donations. Gleaned food is shared with recipients at no cost. So your donation covers all the logistics of recovering food, including packaging materials and transportation of the food gleaned by volunteers, as well as rejected food from grocery stores. I heard recently of a grocery store that had two semi-trips pull up with potatoes. <laughs> and they couldn't use two truckloads. So quickly, they got 50,000 volunteers and unloaded it at a nearby food bank. I also heard of another situation where a banana truck came up and they, the grocery store could not use them. And there were not enough volunteers to unload it. So it went in the dump, the town dump. So, it's easy to make a small gift. It, it works. $25 worth, for example, will feed 800 people. So, we hope that you make your check out to Wesley with a memo marked Gleaning, or you can go online. And as always, we appreciate your support. <coughs>
buckling up the masks and keeping them buckled. I uh, saw a meme on Facebook, source of all truth and knowledge, and uh, it said, I'm not going to pull this worship bus out of the driveway until everybody has buckled up their masks. And it looks like everybody's done that. So thank you for doing that. And uh, for keeping them buckled, uh, that allows us to continue uh, to worship. When we have the responses and the prayers, feel free to speak them. When the songs come, uh, feel free to hum along. Let's stand in heart or posture as we worship God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Put your oil in your lamp. Keep it burning. Put oil in our lamps today. Salvation is at the door. Greed is coming. Just wake it up. I will your way. Uh, it's supposed to play. He's supposed to turn it. Join together now in the prayer of the day. <clears throat> o gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the 
the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
that the thoughts that hold you tell you every night, that live that wondrous night. Whose hand have I hit within my sight? For Christmas and the spring, and the frost so bitter on me, the frozen fields of plenty and warm, as songs of peace were sung. For the walls they built between us, to exact the works of war, were broken and were gone forevermore. Oh, my name is Francis Tolliver, in Liverpool I dwell. It's been years since World War One, but I've learned this lesson as well. For the ones who call the shots won't be among the dead and made. And on each end of a rainbow, The epistle for today comes from the first letter from Paul to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 13th verse, reading through the 18th verse. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we hung the hymn, I invite uh, any children who want to go to Children's Church to follow Jess and Anna. They will take you there, and uh, at the end, they'll even bring you back. So parents, they will come back. Remember to let's play. Back or not. I invite you to stand in posture or in heart as we hear the gospel from Matthew's account, the 25th chapter. He 
Jesus says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding bed, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So I may have shared uh, before how every year as Baby Cold Camp nears, uh, I have dreams about camp. And like a lot of dreams can be, uh, they are not happy dreams. They're dreams about something going wrong. In this case, it's almost always about me not being prepared. For instance, uh, it's Thursday afternoon, and I haven't passed around the sheet of paper for the campers to write down their email addresses and phone numbers so I can take two days to decipher it and uh, get that roster ready to give them on Friday. Or the most common dream is it's Saturday, the very first day of camp, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, and I haven't given the first thought to my campfire message for that night, and I am camping. Any of you fear not being ready for something? Anybody have those fears? Not many. Okay, well, I do. All the people in the back have it. <laughs> so today's story is uh, from Jesus is about not being ready, and like a few weeks ago, um, it's a story about a wedding feast. So I started racking my brain, uh, trying to search the far recesses of my mind to recall 32 years' worth of wedding stories. Like the time I, I officiated a rodeo wedding, a rodeo-themed wedding. But that wasn't very exciting, actually. Or the one that I remember well, where the bride and the groom each had eight attendants, plus junior attendants, plus a ring bearer and a flower girl, plus, plus children pulling other children in a little red wagon blowing bubbles. But you really hadn't been there, I guess, so maybe you can imagine. Or the one where they forgot to get a unity candle, and so finding a suitable substitute for a unity candle became my problem to solve uh, just about 30 minutes before the wedding. And if you know how weddings go, the last 30 minutes before a, a wedding really go by in about 30 seconds. I think that's also the one where the photographer decided it was his job and not mine uh, to tell the ushers when to light the candles. And then there was the time when the sound system, uh, attended by nobody, attended by nobody, began to crackle at the beginning of the wedding and began to crackle and crackle. And, and I literally, I stood there and I willed it to stop crackling and it worked. I had two favorites, actually, two favorite weddings. One was Allie Wheeler 
and Ben Lehman, who decided they had enough of wedding planning, so they told me, we want a marriage and not a wedding. And so I said to them, well, I'll give you a wedding so that you can have a marriage. And I married the two of them alongside just two witnesses in the chapel right here at Wesley. And then way back in Neponset, Illinois, where I served my first full-time appointment, the phone rang one afternoon. I picked it up and I answered, and it was Warren Miller. Pastor Tommy said, Marjorie Wood and I have a license to get married, and we're wondering if we could come to the church and you would marry us. Now, Warren and Marjorie were both widowed. They were both up in years, and everybody knew Everybody in town knew that they had found love again in one another. And so I said, how about tomorrow, say 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Okay, all right, then we'll see you then. Well, less than an hour later, the phone rang again. Pastor Tom, this is Warren Miller, and we were wondering if we could come today instead. So I went home, I put on a suit and tie, came back to the church and lit some candles. The bride and groom and a small gathering of family showed up, and we did it. We did it. And then we all went to Kiwani to eat. Sometimes the time is now, not later. And sometimes the time is later. The section of Matthew in which we find ourselves now addresses the problem of the delay of Christ's return. It's now 70 or 80 years after the time of Jesus, but the promised return hasn't come. So for those who are hearing the story 80 or even 2,000 years later, you've got 10 bridesmaids, or maidens, or virgins, depending on how you translate it. Five are foolish, and five are ones. Or as N.T. Wright translates it, five are silly, and five are sensible. Or as Eugene Peterson translates it, five are silly, and five are smart. They all are expecting the bridegroom to come. It's important to know that, and we'll say a little bit more about that soon. But if I can give the, the ending away ahead of time, the difference between the wise, sensible, smart ones and the silly, foolish ones is not that they fall asleep. As certainly as all of them are expecting the bridegroom to come, they also all fall asleep. Most of the scholars will tell you and me that verse 13 is an addition by Matthew, keep awake, therefore, for you do not know either the day or the hour, while both the foolish ones and the wise ones fell asleep. Staying awake doesn't seem really to be the issue, nor does the expectation that the bridegroom will be coming. They all know that, and they all expect it. The difference is that the wise ones are prepared for the bridegroom to tarry, and the foolish ones are not. The wise ones do not assume that the bridegroom is coming soon, nor do they try to convince anybody else that he's coming soon. It's all about oil. The wise ones make sure they have plenty of oil, while the foolish ones don't. That's the difference. It's all about the oil. We're going to say more about that in but first, let's talk about what weddings were like in first century Palestine. A wedding was an occasion that drew everybody in town in. Everybody in the village was drawn into it, from the youngest to the oldest, and it was the kind of party that virtually nobody would ever want to miss. The high point of that wedding was when the bridegroom went to the home of his bride to transfer her to his home where the rest of the ceremony and the celebration would take place. 
The moment it was announced that the bridegroom was on his way was the moment the whole village would get up and drop everything and join the procession. The bridesmaid's job was to go out from the bridegroom, from the bride's home, greet the bridegroom, accompany him and his family to the bride's home, and then accompany them and the whole wedding party to the bridegroom's house, where those invited enjoyed not merely the wedding ceremony, but a whole week's worth of celebration. And it's true that once the doors were closed, nobody was allowed to enter. But, but you never knew exactly when the bridegroom would come, not even the time of day. And often he could be delayed for someone, for whatever reason. And this bridegroom was. So they all fall asleep. Until at midnight, they hear that call, look, here comes the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. So the wise maidens have brought plenty of oil in case there was a delay. The foolish maidens had not done that. And now the bridegroom was on his way in the darkest, darkest, darkness of night. And nobody was allowed out on the streets at night without a burning lamp. Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out, the silly ones said. No, the sensible ones answered, that won't work. There won't be enough for you and for us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. Now, I don't have any clue whatsoever where they are going to get oil in ancient Palestine in the middle of the night. I mean, is a gas station open somewhere or 7-Eleven or, or something? I, I don't know. But it's a story to the point. And on a literal level, the smart bridesmaids are absolutely right. They're absolutely right. If they give away their oil, they're not going to have enough for their own lamps. And presumably there's plenty of oil out there. That's not the issue. The issue is you've got to remember to bring your own. You can't borrow from the others because the others are going to need their oil. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I'm tired of this pandemic. I'm tired of the uncertainty and I'm tired of the unpredictability. And I'm tired of the disruption of some of my routines. I am tired of wearing a mask, and I am tired of being careful about where I go and, and what I touch, who I touch. I'm tired of trying to remember, we're going to have worship outside Sunday or inside or online, and, and that might change during the week, and then if that changes, it changes what happens between Monday and Saturday. I'm tired of people getting sick. I'm tired of numbers. Tired of people dying, whether I know those people or not, I'm just tired. And, and I know that folks are tired all around. They're tired of not being able to go to church. They are tired of not being able to sit down and eat at a restaurant. They're tired of not being able to see some of their loved ones and maybe seeing some of the other ones a little too much. We're tired of not knowing what or when or how or how long. And whatever we think about the whole thing, frankly, we are tired of other people who don't think the same way that we do. And it's easy to forget in a time like this, a season we never imagined in our wildest dreams, that our purpose is to be ready for Jesus. Not by trying to solve puzzles about the end times. Not about calculating end as if it were a math problem or by anxiously proclaiming that Jesus is coming soon anytime but rather by being wise and not foolish according to Jesus definition and that means being prepared for the bridegroom to take a while 
Today I hear Jesus reminding me uh, that it's my job to remind you, while I'm reminding myself, to take your oil with you while you're waiting. There is that old camp song, I'm sure some of you know it, that says, give me oil for my lamp, keep, my, keep me burning. Give me oil for my lamp, I pray. Give me oil for my lamp, keep me burning, keep me burning till the break of day. And some of the, the, the verses capture the essence of the oil. They're kind of silly, but they capture the essence of the oil. Give me gas for my Ford, keep me trucking for the Lord. Anybody ever seen that at camp or just me? Okay, good, we got one. Thanks, Tori. We'll sing it when we can sing it. Or the other one that says, give me option for my gumption, help me function, function, function. Did you do that one too? No. Anybody? Oh, we got one. Thank you, Brad. Okay. We got one for each. So, so you can go and ask 10 scholars what the oil is, and you're likely to get 10 different answers. Faith or piety or good works, just to name a few. It's clear from what Jesus has to say, particularly in the coming verses, which we're going to be reading over the next couple of Sundays, that the oil does not have anything to do with running around and declaring that the end is near, and so we don't need to worry about temporal matters like caring for the earth, or working for justice, or lifting up the poor, or working for a, a peaceful future right here in this world. And it is not about looking for signs of the end. Jesus is about to urge us. Next Sunday, in the next verses, if you want to go home and read them, he's going to urge us to invest the kingdom tools that we've been given. To feed the hungry and to give the thirsty something to drink to visit the sick and the ones in prison and to do God's kingdom work right here, right now, in this world until we are called elsewhere and until God's kingdom comes in its fullness. Five were foolish and five were wise. And the foolish and the wise ones knew the bridegroom was coming. That was a no-brainer. And the foolish and the wise ones fell asleep. But the foolish ones never thought the bridegroom was going to take so long, so they didn't bring enough oil. The wise ones brought enough oil for a wait. What about us? What about us? Jesus offers a whole sermon, probably several sermons put together actually, on what is foolish and what is wise. He says at the end of it, those who do hear these words of mine are like a wise person who built her house on the rock. Those who hear these words of mine and don't do them or like a foolish person who built her house on the sand. Matthew presents it as the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 through 7. It's a better sermon than the one I'm preaching right now. So you might want to go home and read it. Chapters 5 through 7. Foolish and wise. John Wesley, our Methodist parent, offered us the means of grace. Practices that provide us with oil to keep our lamps lit while we wait. And they are prayer, worship, searching the scriptures, Christian conversation, participation in the sacraments of baptism and holy communion, fasting, and doing works of mercy and justice. Even now. Maybe more than ever now, when we're holding on for dear life, longing for the way things were, or maybe wishing Jesus would just get a move on. Jesus is always more concerned about the way things can be, the way things might be, the way they will be, when God gets what God wants in this world. 
So give me oil for my lamp. Keep me burning. I, I really don't want to be unprepared. Not to dream. And not want to wait. After all, there's going to be a wedding feast. There's going to be a joyful celebration. And I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be ready for that. Let us pray. Blessed God, we're glad to be in this place today. It makes us happy. We're happy to see each other. We're happy to see the place that is our spiritual home. We're grateful that you hear our prayers and our praises. And we give you thanks. We wait to hear those words, look, 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 the bridegroom is coming. And while we're waiting, God, we ask that you would give us oil for our lamp to keep us burning. Help us to do the things that you call us to do, to engage in the kingdom work that brings love and hope and peace and peacemaking and justice and kindness and caring and wholeness to this world as we wait for that banquet when all is fulfilled. God, the world is in our hearts today, especially those who are sick, especially those who are bringing healing. We pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those who are attempting to, uh, to bring us to that end. Pray for all who are struggling because of changes in routine and situation. God, our country is in our hearts today. We are a deeply divided country, and we need the love and peace that Christ brings to us and offers to us. Help us, God, to seek more to, to understand others than to be understood. Help us to love more than we seek to be loved. Bring us hope and help us to bring hope to others. We lift up this community in which we live. We lift up the campus of Eastern Illinois University. We lift up our church, Wesley Church, and all churches. We pray for our people. Pray that you might use us to bring your kingdom into this world more fully. And we pray that you would hear us as we speak, as we pray the words from our hearts that Jesus taught us when he said, Pray like this, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. want to take a moment uh, so that you know uh, we don't pass a plate right now, but there is an offering plate right back uh, over by Mr. Landman, and uh, you can, if you didn't put something in on the way in, uh, you can still put something in on the way out if you want to. Thank you for doing that. You can also continue to send your offering uh, by mail. You can go online to our website find a place where you can give online, you can do it that way. However you do it, however folks who are watching us or will be watching us are doing it, uh, the two big words I want to say are thank you. Thank you for your faith, thank you for your faithfulness, 
Thank you for all the ways um, that you are a light shining into the world, uh, especially in these times. Uh, thank you for your gifts. Because of them, we're still making a difference. Lives are being changed, and uh, we are being lifted up to do our kingdom work in this world. Yesterday, uh, as was mentioned earlier, there were some folks who, who did helping hands. We went to folks' houses who needed uh, some things done, leaf raking and leaves blown off of roofs and things fixed. And in a very safe way, uh, we were able to do that. And uh, I hope that we'll have, uh, I know Pastor Janice was taking some pictures, and I think we'll have some pictures and some words about that a little bit later on. Uh, we also, as many of you know, we have a new community garden as of this summer, and um, it's coming along beautifully. It is the, the work of the green team, uh, but also Alex Pearson's uh, Eagle Scout project. And uh, if, you, if you haven't gotten a good look at it, uh, you might want, I'm not going to tell you to go backward out of the parking lot. Just go out the regular way, but swing back around, and it's right over there. You can take a look even if you want to get out and look at it. You're free to do that. It's really exciting, and I want us to take a moment. Uh, we have uh, a ministry moment from uh, Alex giving us an update about the garden project. So let's give it a look. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex Pearson. I'm currently working on my Eagle Scout project, which is to expand the community garden started by the Green Team at Wesley and Arden Methodist Church. The hope is to be able to provide fresh vegetables for the food and secure in our community. I began construction in September, but I thought I'd give you an update. The layout shows a paper sidewalk leading from the road. The front half will be covered by rubber matting for accessibility, and the back half will be wood mulch. There'll be a brick border outlining the garden to keep the mulch in, and the raised beds will be made of cedar to ensure they will last over time. A bandage made of recycled plastic caps that were collected by the hoist house will be added to the garden as well. The site located is in a lot behind the parsonage next to the church. Here is a shot of the area before construction began. A quick trip to Terre Haute brought back over 2,000 pounds of papers for the garden. Another trip to Danville was taken to pick up the brick for the perimeter. <coughs> I had a team of friends and family that are helping me with the hours of labor needed to construct the garden. We assembled the cedar boxes piece by piece. We only had a few splinters and cracks and scrapes. Here I am hammering one of the 600 staples for the weed barrier. This picture shows me laying down one of the 181 bricks that'll be around the perimeter. Here we are measuring and laying the garden boxes where they will be on the ground top. The skeleton of the garden has been laid out, but we're not done. I'm still in need of funds to pay for the materials used to complete the garden. Here are a few ways you can help. You can donate directly to me. You can write a check to Wesley United Methodist Church with garden <coughs> to the line. Or check out my GoFundMe page by following the link or go to GoFundMe and search Eagle Scout Garden Project. Thank you all who have donated and supported me and my Eagle Scout project. Your thoughtfulness is greatly appreciated. Have a great day.
Let us pray. We set our hope in you, God of all ages, and seek to serve you through our offerings and our efforts to encourage and equip one another for ministry. Help us decide daily to live according to your will, preparing ourselves for the opportunities and challenges you give us. May your rule shape our lives in ways that introduce men to the joys of eternity in the midst of time. Now may God, our Maker, bless you and keep you. May Jesus Christ give you oil for your lamp, gas for your cord, and unction for your gumption. <laughs> may the Holy Spirit empower us, empower you to walk with me, and I will walk with you. And build the land that God has planted, where love shines. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.